today's video, I have some mugs, hang on, or I should say some tumblers. So I've got these, these two tumblers. It's a really dark, rich, almost burgundy clay body when it's in its final firing. Um, and I don't have a test tile, but I just cannot wait any longer. Um, I have actually, I'll show you, I've, I've prepared some test tiles. They're going to go in and get fired. Um, I find doing test tiles is, is so important in glazing. Um, and then of course you want to make sure you're documenting everything. Um, because it, it too is vital when you're, you're trying to remember what, you did, especially when something successful happens. I do have, uh, you know, the glaze that I'm going to use on these, uh, the combo. I have it. I have tested it. I've actually tested it on this. Um, and I quite love the drips and everything that you get from here. Um, I just have, this was a, a mixed marbled clay that I, I put it on. I just haven't tried it on this particular clay body. And as you know, that matters. You can get some pretty dramatically different results with different clay bodies. This particular clay body will fire to this really deep, you can see it on the bottom here, this deep, like I said, almost almost burgundy. So gorgeous. Um, that actually is a Plainsman Clay 390. Um, and I'm, I really do like it. So I, I'm going to be trying this combo. I just, I'm going to try it on these two pots and see how it goes. So it's this combo on these pots. Um, and that's what gives this really beautiful drip and it, it's a runner. You can see at the very bottom here, it's a runner. Now you need brushes. You want to make sure you're either using, you know, these type of mop, these fluffy brushes. I'm a big fan of the fan brush. I, I really like the way that it deposits the, the uh, glaze because it's very important that you get a lot of glaze on. Have you ever had a glaze bottle that the threads were all mucked up with glaze so you can't get the lid open? Well, this is a useful tip. Just take the whole container, lid intact, and just dip it in some water. Take it out, leave it on the counter for like one minute, and that will water will seep in, soften that glaze, and you'll be able to open the lid right up. All right, so with these glazes, they're, they've got a crystal inside, and you really want to make sure that you actually get the crystals on the pots because that's what does the magic. So you want to make sure that you really stir up your glaze. Um, I gave it a good shake. You want to make sure that your brush is loaded. Okay, that's, that's a key. Every time you dip your brush in, you want to stir your glaze so that you're getting the glaze. So we want to make sure we get this on here. Now we can coax out some of these lovely drips um, that this is going to give us, right? That, that we want. So I'm going to get this along the top of my pot. And what I'm going to do is begin creating a bit of a wavy pattern with my brush. Because what we're going to hope for is that especially on those lower areas, we're gonna get a bit more of a run. Now you could have, you know, if you wanna be, you could wax this whole thing with that shape. I'm gonna clean that little area up with just a sponge. And get a little bit of the crystals along the edge so that they will dribble down inside. So what I'm going to do um, is just clean up the couple of areas where I put glaze that I, I don't really want it. So with a wet sponge, I'm just going to wipe it away. It'll give it a nice strong edge, which will really help to coax out some beautiful drips.
Hmm. That's coat number one. Check it off. I did one. I did one coat, so I'm going to do one tick. Okay, done my second coat of winter wood, so now I know that I've done two coats of winter wood. Load up the brush, really load it up like a big, thick, heavy mop. Plop it down, and I just sort of swirl it around, working my way up the sides. And I'm going to go about halfway. So this will be revealed. Um, kind of as you're drinking. That's my hope. So on the inside, it's going to be a little bit of lavender mist into the oblong. There, you can see. Oh, that shows up okay. All right, let that dry, and I'll do another coat. So we want to mark that down on our little piece of paper. So Albalone. I've got one coat. So now we're ready to apply our first coat of lavender mist. Um, it's one of my favorite glazes. It's so pretty. So be sure to shake the, the pot vigorously to incorporate all of the ingredients. And then using a fan brush, really load it up and begin applying it. Now because this glaze combo, I have tested it out and I know that it's a runner, I'm just gonna step back a little bit from the edge of uh, where I finished off with the winter wood and I'm gonna really uh, uh, concentrate the glaze on the uh, closer to the top or rim of the pot, scraping my brush off so that some of the glaze uh, runs on the inside as well as really makes a nice thick coat there. I'm doing the same on the other my other pot as well, just so that uh, what we do to one, we do to the other. I went down about halfway, so overlapping the albalone on the inside of the pot, uh, uh, just so that the, the two of those glazes really melted together. So you can see, I went about halfway down on the inside there, and you can see where the albalone and the uh, lavender mist meet. And we'll just leave those to dry before we apply our second coat. Be sure to make sure you make any notes as to what you've done so that you know where you've left off. Okay, second coat. Now that they've had a few minutes to dry, and as you get more and more layers of glaze on, you're going to notice that you actually need to give longer time in between coats in order to be able to apply more. So I'm using uh, another brush here. Just again, it's going to apply a nice heavy coat. I'm kind of following along a very wavy pattern towards uh, on the pot, just to, again to encourage the glaze drips on the low points uh, of the placement of the glaze. So this will really help to encourage some nice runs in those areas, those downward areas. So again, second coat mimics the first, being heavier on the rim, um, and then slightly thinning out as it makes its way to, uh, to the winter wood at the bottom. On the inside, you don't have to be super careful, but you do want to make sure you get at least, you know, adequate or two coats of glaze on the pot. And uh, the kiln will do the magic. It'll help melt it all together and you're going to get really nice effects all on the inside of the pot. So all that's left to do is wipe away any of the residual glaze that's left, like fingerprints or little drips, with a wet sponge. Do a reveal. Hopefully, I guess, in a good 24 hours it's going to be before... It's actually 48 from now. So stay tuned. It should be exciting. I'm back, and I'm excited. So those um, wine tumblers 
are out of the kiln and I am tickled pink. So I'm going to show you what they look like. I got me some nice drips. I got me some nice drips. Very, very nice. That's what I was after. And then you can see inside how it kind of ran down. And I was that was a, remember it was a last minute decision where I decided to put the um, Albalone on the bottom, which is that kind of pinky color in the very, very bottom there. I put some of the Albalone, so just the bottom inside about that far up but on the inside and then it was lavender mist so you can see how the lavender mist I mean you could just do it lavender mist the whole way down I broke it up with something got some great drips a couple went off the edge but that's okay for me because what I'll do or what I've done on this pot is I've sanded it so um, you can clean up the bottoms and then it's just it actually looks kind of interesting on when it's on a table so I like that 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 is kind of what I'm after, but you can see how by really cleaning up that edge encourages some of these drips. And then of course, encouraging this rounded flow will, will pretty much guarantee you some good drips. So this one you can see, because I did put it on top of one of my, um, one of these little guys. And I got the idea, oh, I don't have a clean one, I've got lots of drips. I got the idea from, uh, old forge pottery so you do these you throw these on the wheel and then basically it elevates let me get my fingers out of the way without dropping my pot it elevates and allows for that space for your drips to kind of if they have to surpass the pot before they hit anything it's a way of then of course catching it instead of it messing up your kiln shelf and then you can go in and just sand it so uh, and it doesn't look so bad. Do this, you like? Are you going to try this technique? Let me know. Make a comment below. Tell me what you think. But I am pleased. This is, this is exactly what I was looking for. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. So, ciao.